Hi, welcome to Painting with Rec. My name is Sam, I'm your host, and today we're going to paint a firefly painting with glow-in-the-dark paint. The materials that you're going to need today is glow-in-the-dark paint, acrylic paint in green, yellow, white, blue, and black. You're gonna need three paint brushes, a big brush, a medium, and a small brush. You're gonna need water and a palette, or you can even use a paper plate. You're gonna need a canvas that's 16 by 20. And we're gonna get started. So I thought this was a perfect painting for summer. It's super fun and super easy. And I'm gonna walk you through it from start to finish. So first I'm gonna start with my big brush and I'm gonna coat it with my blue paint. And I'm gonna take it to my canvas and we're gonna start by going in back and forth motions. And you're just gonna coat your canvas starting from the top and we're gonna work our way down. So just keep going back and forth, back and forth with your blue paint. You can even kind of coat the sides to make it look very nice and finished. And this is our sky for our painting. It's always good to start with your background so that we can have that dry and no paint is kind of mixing together. And uh, it's just, it's gonna be a great painting. Super easy. So anyone can really do it. You can do this with your families. You could do it as a gift. And um, it's just really, really nice to take your time for yourself and paint a beautiful painting. So let's just keep going. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna paint our blue background about to the middle. It's okay if paint gets a little bit on your canvas because we're gonna work on blending. And I'm gonna show you a little painter's trick that I learned that will make our background look very nice and like ombre without having to do too much work. And don't worry about those paintbrush streaks because that gives it a nice texture for your background. So I'm just taking my palette and really coating up my brush here. So yeah, I'm getting out those sides and I'm just kind of going back and forth back and forth and I'm going up a little bit and I'm going down in a nice back and forth motion, painting the house, back and forth. And we're gonna keep going until we get to about halfway down and then we're gonna start going into this white and blending that into the blue. And we're almost there. So this is going to look really, really good. And uh, so I work here at Cadell Fine Arts and we actually offer these type of classes, painting, arts and crafts, ceramics, all sorts of fun stuff. And it's a little bit for everybody. I mean, we teach adults, kids, special needs. So definitely come on up to C CFA, Cadell Fine Arts, and get a schedule when you can. And we do stuff like this all the time. So if this is your thing, and you're just looking for a little getaway, it's the perfect place to be. All right, so we did about halfway with our blue. And it's okay if it's a little mixed up in the middle there, because what we can do is take our dirty brush. We don't even have to clean it. And we can go right in the center with a little bit of white. And this is when we're gonna start getting that really nice transition going. As if the sun is going down. And it's that really nice twilight of the night. And that's when you see the fireflies coming out. And that's my favorite time of the day. So again, I'm going back and forth and I am getting that white going. 
and I'm going down and I'm going up a little bit and I'm just blending that in. And everybody's painting is going to be looking a little bit different, but that's the beauty of art because even though we're all doing the same thing, it's always going to have our own special touch on it. So, yep, I'm, I'm kind of bending over here to get my sides because when you're painting in a, with a gallery canvas with sides, like I said, it's really nice to kind of finish that off by getting those sides real good. And I'm blending up and I'm coming back down. And even though we are going to be doing the grass down here, we're just going to do our whole background white because that gives a nice base layer for when we put our grasses and everything like that. So that it's not, you're not seeing the texture of the canvas so much. So that's also another little nice trick that I want to offer to you. So yes, we're going to paint this white all the way down. And I'm wearing a apron today because I'm a very messy painter. And we want to make sure that we are covering our, our clothes up and making sure we don't get it all over our parents' house. All right. Or over all over our nice carpets, ladies. So yes, we always make sure that we have a protective gear on when we're painting, right? And we are almost done with our background. So a really important thing when you're doing your background is to make sure that you let it dry fully because if you don't, your colors are going to blend together and they're going to get a little muddy. So make sure that when you're all finished with your background, you let it dry. And if you're feeling a little impatient, you can always use a, a hair dryer at home. You can let it air outside and just make sure that it's all nice and dry. All right. We are just about done here. Okay. So we're going to let our painting dry for about five to 10 minutes, and then we're going to come back and we're going to start working on the grass. All right. Now that our background is all dry, we're going to start with the grass. So we're going to start with our black and I'm just kind of coating my brush. I'm still using my big brush. And we're going to make a black bar going on the bottom of our canvas about a quarter of the way up. And this is basically going to mimic like the shadows of the night. So we're going to start from the bottom here. And again, we're just doing back and forth strokes with our black paint. And we are just going to keep going with that, like I said, about the quarter of the way up. So let's go. So this is um, a nice little trick too, because it kind of mimics silhouettes so that you don't have to do all of that crazy detail work, especially if you're doing like a nighttime painting here. And we're going to go in next with our medium sized brush. And I'm going to show you how to do some grass strokes. All right. Going to go up a little bit further and yes, this is just one of my absolute favorite paintings. I did this with my adult class and they loved it. Their favorite part of course was when we were all finished and we turned out the lights and we got to see it glowing in the dark. It was just so cool. And actually glow in the dark paint is pretty easy to come by. You can get it from almost any craft store and all you need is a little dab to really get that light work going in. Okay. So don't worry about your line being a perfect line. Because when you actually really look at grass, you'll see that everything's kind of going in different directions. It's not just straight lines. So don't worry too much about that when we start doing our grass. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to put that in the water for now because we need to wash that off so our brush doesn't have a bad hair day. And I'm going to take my detail brush here 
dip it back into the black, swirl my paint on it, get it nice and coated. And we're gonna start doing those fun little grass points here. So I'm gonna kind of put my paint over to the side so you guys could see. And I'm just kind of flicking my brush in different directions here. And I'm kind of making like an X almost with my brush. So we're just, we're doing happy little pieces of grass here. And we're gonna do that all the way through. All the way to the other side. So just keep on going. And it doesn't matter when, while you're at home and you're doing this by yourself or with your kids. You know, we just, this is all fun. We're not aiming for perfection. We're just trying to have a good time here. So don't worry too much about it looking exactly like mine, because like I said, everybody's is gonna look a little bit different. So I'm still going with my black paint. I'm making X's basically here. I'm going back and putting some extra strokes in. I'm just flicking my brush in a downward motion. All right. And we're finishing there. Okay, so that part's about done. And I'm just gonna put my brush in my water here. And so that's gonna need a little bit of time to dry. But while we're, let, we're waiting for that to dry, we can start working on my favorite part is doing the fireflies and I'm gonna show you how to do stars too. So we're gonna make sure that our detail brush is nice and clean. And I have a little paper towel here. And here's a little trick for you at home too. When you're washing your brush, you're making sure that you get all that extra paint off. So I'm taking a little um, paper towel and I'm wiping it. And I'm looking at my paper towel and making sure that there's no paint on there. And that lets me know that I'm not gonna bleed that color into the next color, okay? So that's a little trick for you there too. And we're gonna start doing our fireflies. So this is all up to you. You could have as many as you want or as few as you want. It's gonna be very derivative. Um, we're just basically doing a lot of circles, okay? So I'm going in with my yellow paint on my brush, and I'm going to flip my palette over, and I'm just gonna start doing my circles. So this is the, the glowing part of our flyer fly here. So I'm gonna do I'm just gonna kind of go with the flow and see how many looks nice to the eye to me. So and I'm also doing them in different sizes because that can give the illusion of your fireflies being closer or further away. And I'm kind of touching on different points on my canvas here. So I'm in the corner and I'm coming down here on the side because let's say it's a nice July summer night and that is when you'll see the most fireflies come out. And they're all twinkling together in the sky. So when I'm doing my circles, I usually start with an outer circle and then I start to take my brush and I slowly swirl in to get that all painted through. I think I might do one more up in the corner. And I think that'll be good for now. I might add some more, we'll see. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is with our, we don't even need to wash our brush because again, we're going to um, kind of blend those colors together a little bit. So I'm just gonna go right in with my green, with my brush, didn't even wash it. I'm gonna move my canvas over to the side and I'm going to, well, my palette. <laughs> I'm gonna start going in with that green. And so you know that when you see fireflies, they're like 
a little bit yellow, a little bit green. And I'm also, I'm making like the letter C. And I'm going backwards and I'm going forwards because we're glowing in different directions here. Because no firefly is the same either. And I'm just doing that on the outer side and the outer corners of my little yellow circles here. That looks nice. You can swoop that around if you want. Just touching up my little guys here. Okay, so now we wanna kind of make them look like they're illuminating. So I'm gonna take some of my um, thoughts and, and visions of Van Gogh and when he did the Starry Night. You remember that one? And we're, not, we're still gonna take our dirty brush. We don't even have to clean it off. And we're gonna go in a little bit with our white and we're kinda blending a little bit here with our two colors that we had on before, the yellow and the green. And we're just gonna start doing some strokes, light little lines going around our circles to make them look like they're lighting up in the night sky. And you can add a little bit more white to kind of bring out those highlights. So we're doing some highlights and we're doing some low lights here. So let's go all the way around each and every one of our fireflies so that they're lighting up the night sky. Van Gogh was one of my favorite painters because he didn't, he wasn't trying to be too realistic. He was mostly going for feeling and he saw the world a little bit differently. And art is so important, especially right now. We all need a little bit of art therapy in our life here and there. And that's why I love art so much because we can take a little bit of time for ourselves and learn something new every time. Okay. So I got my, my strokes going around my fireflies here. Doing my last little touch-ups. Okay. Now, our grass is still not ready yet, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with the white, and I'm gonna show you how to make perfect circles. Instead of sitting here with a little tiny brush trying to do little perfect circles, I take the other side of my paintbrush here. Just like hold it like a pencil and dip it into that white, and you're just gonna start lightly touching your canvas and that'll give you some perfect little stars twinkling in the night. Oh, I love that. I used to painstakingly sit there with a single hairbrush <laughs> and try and paint these little dots. And when I discovered that you could do this, this is my favorite little trick to show people. So I'm putting stars all over my sky. Another thing you can do too is you can get a toothbrush make sure it's not the one that you're going to use and <laughs> make sure it's like an old brush or something that you're only going to use for art and you can dip that into your paint and you can use your finger and kind of flick that onto your canvas and you'll get some really randomized cool looking stars that way as well so play around with your at home materials you can use q-tips too those always make some really nice, big circles. All right. Couple more. And it looks like our grass is almost ready to go. Just takes a little bit of patience when we're painting. One more, okay. So now I'm gonna wash my smaller detail brush. And I'm doing my little trick. I'm making sure I don't have any paint left on here. 
wiping that off and getting off that top so that you don't accidentally smear that on your face. And we're going to start doing some little highlights and lowlights here in the grass. And it's very similar to the technique that we were doing before. So I am going in with my yellow and I'm coating my brush back and forth with my detail brush. And I'm going to move over here and I'm just going to start doing an upward motion random places all over my grassy area. We're going to start with yellow and then we're going to do some green. And maybe even a little bit of white just to make it a little interesting so we're not just seeing a big black bar at the bottom. So happy little pieces of grass all over the place. One thing I love about art too is that you do, you start to look at things a little closer. You know, you don't, every day when you're out and you're going to school or you're at home and working right now, like many of us are, we don't really have time to take a breath and really look at nature like we want to. But when you're an artist, you tend to look a little bit closer at things. And you notice the textures of the trees and the blades of grass, which really made me appreciate that so much more. Okay, so I got my little lines going on there. Um, same thing, I'm not even gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna go in with that green. So it gives me kind of like a lime green color going on, a little bit of mixing there. And I'm gonna do the same thing, just randomly put some grass all around my bottom of the canvas here. So these are what we call low lights in artist terms because they're a little they're a little darker than our highlight. In all different directions. You can even add a little bit of white still. You don't have to wash your brush or anything like that just to kind of add a little bit more dimension in there. I mean, it's totally up to you. Let's get those little pieces in there. And after this, we only have about two more steps and our painting is done. Okay, all right, so I have a nice grass and our line, like I said, doesn't even have to be perfect because maybe we're looking at a rolling hill and that's okay too. So I'm gonna wash my detail brush really good. I didn't even really need my medium sized brush but it's always good to be over prepared in that instance. So I'm swirling my brush around in my water bucket. And yeah, you wanna make sure that your brush is really clean for this part because we're gonna start doing the jar. And it's a little intimidating, but I promise I'm gonna try and break it down and make it very easy for you. So what we're gonna do is take our detail brush and we're gonna dip into our white, coat our brush really good. And we're gonna do an oval. And so with our jar, Think about where on the canvas you want to put it. So there's basically our canvas is broken up into four sides. So if you want your jar on the right hand side or the left hand side a little bit up or a little bit in the grass, that's totally up to you. But I always like to kind of make my painting a little bit off center. So I'm going to kind of make it off to the left a little bit, my left. So I paint it. I have my paint, my white paint on my little brush and I'm just going to kind of swirl my hand a little bit and think about where I want my, the top of my lid to be. So I think I like this spot here in between my two little fireflies and I'm just going to lightly draw an oval 
That is the lip of my jar. Because when you're a little kid or even an adult, you might like to go catch fireflies in a little jar, but it's always important to make sure that you let them go when you're done because we need to let them keep lighting up the night sky. So I got my oval and it could be a little painterly. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. I like to keep my strokes very loose and I'm going to make some bumps on each side because that's like where the lid kind of screws on. So I'm making a couple little bumps here and I'm kind of stepping in front and stepping back to make sure that they're pretty even. It's always good to kind of step in and step back a little bit and take a look at your work and make sure that it's looking the way you want. It's got me two little bumps. They almost look like threes. And then we're going to draw the shoulders. They're going to look like shoulders to me. So I'm going to even, it's going over my firefly and that's okay. That kind of gives the illusion of him in the background. And I'm making my shoulders, my shoulders of the jar. Okay. And now we're just going to take that line and we're just going to go straight down into the grass. I'm going to set my palette down so that I can have a steadier hand and draw that line coming down. And you want it to kind of go into the grass because you don't want it to look like your jar is just kind of floating in space. So you always kind of want to anchor things when you're doing like an inner and an outer painting. So I'm bringing it down. Getting some more white on my brush. And I'm pulling that line down. Almost done. Pulling it into the grass. There we go. I'm, I'm kind of rounding it off. But, you know, it's kind of tucked into the grass, so we're not really going to draw that bottom line just yet. Okay. So now we're going to add some little highlights to our glass jar. And this is up to you. Highlights are super fun. So you can just kind of randomize, draw some lines going in different directions for your jar. Kind of finish off the lip here and just have fun with the, the little highlight part. I always do it different every single time because I just love doing the little reflections of the glass. So we got one little guy in there already in our jar and we have another guy kind of looking inside. Okay. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with my jar. Okay, so now for the final part and it's my favorite part. Okay, so we're gonna get our glow in the dark paint. Um, I just use a little bit. Um, it's gonna look transparent on our canvas but um, when you take it into a dark room, it's, you're gonna see it lit up. So this is just a Studio 71 paint. And uh, I mean, you can get pretty much any kind of glow in the dark paint. It's gonna work all the same. So this is pretty inexpensive and you get a lot for what you're paying for. So I'm gonna get my glow in the dark paint out, put it on my canvas. Again, I'm gonna wash my detail brush really good make sure that I get all my white and my colors out. And I'm going to start doing my glow in the dark part. So you can get a little crazy with this. I mean, it's up to you. You could, I, we were doing it before where we put the glow in the dark part on the jar. We did some stars. Um, but the most thing that you want to keep in mind for this painting is to at least get your fireflies in there. Cause that's the whole point, right? We want them to glow. 
So I got my glow paint. It looks very similar to my white paint, so keep that in mind if you're using a big palette like mine, not to get those two confused. And coat your brush really good. I'm gonna swing my palette to the side, and I'm gonna start painting my fireflies with my glow in the dark paint. Ooh, it, there's a storm going on here. <laughs> All right, we're having a stormy day. Well, that's a perfect day to start painting. Okay. That is Mother Nature for you. All right, so just like before, I'm making circles. I'm starting with an outer circle, and then I'm kind of filling it in. I'm getting all those little fireflies glowing. And like I said, you're not really gonna see it here, but when you're at home, you'll, you'll see a little bit of film. Um, it, it's very translucent, so you're not gonna really see it until, you, like I said, you take it into a darker space. Okay, so we are about finished, but the most important thing, artists, that you need to do when you're doing a painting is sign it, because you never know Maybe one day you'll be a famous artist. All right, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of white with my detail brush, and my name is Sam, so I'm gonna put a little S on the right-hand corner. And there you have it. All right, so we've completed our Firefly painting. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Again, I am your host, Sam. Thank you for joining Painting with Rec and we'll see you next time.